The Dubs pulled off a jaw-dropping comeback against both an incredibly tough-to-beat Donovan Mitchell-led Cavaliers team and a seemingly biased officiating crew who were making some quite frankly weak calls. Nonetheless, Golden State ultimately edged out Cleveland, a red-hot team in the Cavs, who've already beat the reigning East champion winning Boston Celtics twice in the span of one week. The Warriors' insane comeback mostly consisted of daggers one after the other down the stretch from Stephen Curry as a part of his second straight 40-point masterclass. Also fueling the scrappy comeback was the return of Golden State's clutch championship defense, which came in the form of three consecutive game-winning plays from each member of the Big Three in Steph, Dre, and Clay. Speaking of Draymond, he had 13 dimes in this one and dictated the flow of the offense to perfection. Jordan, I got the bag bro pool, finally started earning his contract with an efficient 18 piece off the pine. His extension bro in two-way wigs was himself as well by dropping 20. Last but not least, there was the key contributions from role players like Anthony Lamb, who had 10 points and 2 triples, and Mr. 99 overall hands, Kevon Looney, who had a crucial 10 rebounds, 2 blocks, and he also set hard screens one after the next. Looney did every bit of the dirty work, which led him to tying Stephen Curry for a game high and plus minus. Despite the whistle being against them like it has been all year for some reason, the dubs dug in to hold the Cavaliers to zero field goals over nearly a four minute stretch late in the clutch. I know it's become a hot take because of how dominant Giannis is, but if you needed further proof of Stephen Curry being the most talented, aka the best player in the game, he just personally gave it to you. Wardell's become the first player in the 76 year history of the association to record back to back games of 40 plus points with 5 plus threes on 65 plus percent shooting. I know we get specific about stats, but just think about him being the first player ever to have done that. Willing the dubs over the finish line, Steph scored 18 fourth quarter points while having the stamina to also play exceptional defense, as the balance work he put in over the offseason is evidently paying off. What'll receive all the attention is the fact that Curry's numbers are currently better than they were during his unanimous MVP season in 2016. Safe to say he's on track for adding MVP trophy number three. As part of a viciously clutch second straight 40 bomb, a few of Steph's most elite qualities in his stamina and IQ were on full display. This man's an offensive shark, meaning he quite literally never stops moving without the basketball constant relocation, which led to the game-tying three off a give-and-go with Draymond. Despite that exerted energy, very next possession on the other end defensively, Steph presses up on Mitchell and recovers after Donovan attacks his top foot and forces the miss. Then he leaks out in transition and out-hustles everyone for the go-ahead layup. That late defensive stance from Curry was followed by Klay Thompson getting a steal off the inbound, and the play after that, Draymond forces Mitchell to drive baseline and nearly go out of bounds, but gets whistled for the foul. Three plays where three four-time champions provide physical, grimy, title-winning caliber individual defense to seal a Golden State W. Going back to my point about Curry's stamina, and Steve Kerr touched on that post-game, saying, quote, He's just amazing night after night. He's in such great shape. If there's one area that he's dramatically better now than when I first got here eight years ago, it's just his strength and conditioning. He's much bigger and stronger, much more capable of defending at a really high level, and sustaining two-way basketball for an entire game, and just knocking down shots from all over and finishing at the rim. He's unbelievable, end quote. While one of the big three members in Klay Thompson only shot 3 for 13 from the field, let's cut the second half of the Splash Brothers some slack for knocking down an extremely clutch three-pointer in the final minutes and for playing incredible defense on one of the best players in the league in Donovan Mitchell all throughout. Meanwhile, the $140 million man, Jordan Poole, finally came through and looked comfortable doing what he does in that sixth man role, something the Dubs can't live without. As I said in my last Warriors video, the dubs need JP to produce like the player that went off in last year's finals. Poole was incredibly engaged defensively, which is great to see, and offensively he wasn't forcing things too much. When Jordan's playing off his instincts and in the flow of the game, not letting anything phase him, that's when he's at his best. While the consistency with Poole has been a big time issue this year, Golden State needed every point of those 18 he provided off the pine. Draymond Green stepped up the desperateness in his patented backside rotations and on the other end was the undervalued yet exceptional dribble handoff presence that he is for this Golden State system. 
casuals only look at his point per game average and say that he didn't contribute anything offensively when that couldn't be further from the truth. Draymond's willingness to pass up opportunities for himself, which about any other player in the same scenario would take, and instead find Warrior shooters off pin downs or give and goes, generates so much of the Warriors' offensive rhythm. When he fakes a handoff or defenders just leave him wide open, most of the time Draymond's able to finish off the play, despite the occasional blown layup, but you have to look beyond the flashy point per game averages that we all put so much value in to see what Green actually contributes. You can't forget about how badly needed the Dubs role players were in the hard fought win over Cleveland. We talked about Kevon Looney's impact in the opening, but Looney touched on another role player in his post game availability, saying, We rely on spacing, cutting, being on the court with all stars. You have to know where to be at. The front office has done a great job of finding guys like that. Anthony Lamb is an example. End quote. Loon makes a solid point there, as Lamb was exceptional on Friday night, taking advantage of the open space he was given. Open space which is made possible due to opposing defenses collapsing on the Warriors top guys. Once the pass came to him from a Warrior creator, Anthony didn't hesitate, not looking scared in the slightest bit to let it fly. The Warriors need as much shooting as possible, as they're currently ranked down as the 13th best team in 3 point percentage. That efficiency has actually improved as they were just number 29 in 3 point percentage, but considering the Dubs were the 4th best team in that area throughout their championship season last year, they're going to need important bench weapons like Anthony Lamb to make up for the free agent losses of floor spacers in the Young Glove, Automatic, and Belly. Against the Cavs, Lamb had 10 points and 4 rebounds, making 4 of his 7 field goals and 2 of his 5 shots from downtown. Again, Golden State needs as many role players as possible to be taking and making 3 pointers and being productive all around like Lamb was if they're going to continue their quest to bounce back after dropping 5 straight on the road. Backup combo guard Dante DiVincenzo returned Friday after missing 8 consecutive games due to a left hamstring injury. Double D didn't score a single point, but you could tell his ball handling was supremely missed. I thought he kept the Warriors offense organized in the 16 minutes he was given. Dante dropped 3 dimes and was tied for a team 3rd best in plus minus with Klay Thompson as a plus 3. What needs to keep happening the most for Golden State to build up a win streak? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time. Thanks for watching, have a good one.